welcome back to another episode of the Everyday Joy Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Couchman, and I cannot wait to find moments of joy with you today. We're going to dive straight into today's words to live by. Let's dive into the Word of God. Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. Romans 12, 12. Keely. I just love having you here. It's like <laughs> I was saying this the other day when I had Tiani here. I was like, bring your bestie to work day. <laughs> yeah. To see what you do and mm. what the studio looks like. It's so fun when you get to see like what your friends do. Yeah. Even like I like have been into your work the other day and I was like, I love it here. It's beautiful. <laughs> and when everyone likes like, Keely, come around the front. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, You're so cool. <laughs> you have privileges. <laughs> Uh, well, this verse, uh, rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. What are your first thoughts about this, Kills? Um, yeah, it's just like, well, I read the NIV version, mm. which is like, be joyful in hope and be patient in affliction. Mm. And yeah, it's pretty like, it's pretty a hectic one, but it's also really good because God's encouraging us to like, I guess, stay the course and yeah, just keep on going keep on praying like just sticking to being faithful and joyful and yeah in what he has for us yeah it's so true because I think we need to be reminded sometimes that being in the midst of trouble Mm. and difficult circumstances actually doesn't mean we're outside God's will yeah and so that's why he says like keep rejoicing keep being Mm. joyful because you know keep praying yeah. Because he has plans, yeah, and he and it's it's gonna be okay, even yeah. though it feels like a lot right now. I love that phrase, like our confident hope. Mm. We can be confident about like having hope for the future yeah. because of Jesus, even if it looks rough, even if it doesn't make sense, even if mm. we can't figure it out. Yeah, we have a confident hope yeah. in Jesus, even if it takes a long time. Like there's so many Bible stories and people. It's like three and three years later it's like whoa we don't even know what happened they just had to keep being patient keep praying keep you know sticking to god and we don't hear about that necessarily we hear the terrible they're like cry and then three years later and then here's here's how it all got better yeah we forget that there's time in the middle of yeah those seasons totally and i think it's such a great reminder to be patient in trouble to mm. keep on praying because I know even for me when I go through tough seasons I'm like lord like like just fix it now mm. like don't don't let any don't make me have to grow in this like yeah. just fix it right now and I just love that it's this reminder and I feel like in this we're being reminded in trouble you can have hope mm. and in trouble you can be patient and keep praying even if you don't feel like it and even yeah. if you don't want to this reminds me, you know, we were talking on Monday about how you moved to Melbourne mm. and you kind of went from, oh my goodness, we're moving to Melbourne, I'm living in a city, mm-hmm. I'm going to plant a church, to, oh my goodness, I'm in Melbourne and it is COVID lockdowns. Yeah. And I guess for you, and I know I kind of, I kind of, I know you. <laughs> and so I kind of know you. And so I know that that was a massive season for you. Mm-hmm. And I just love you to dive into a little bit, like what was life like? We went mm-hmm. into lockdowns, what happened? And like, how did you have hope and confidence in that season? Yeah. Um, yeah. So when we like went into lockdown, or well, mind you, I moved to Melbourne when I was 19. And so, yeah. I always forget how young you were. <laughs> I just crazy. imagine because also Keely, she didn't grow up in a Christian yes, home. I was about to say that. So I just keep, I just whatever Keely tells me this story, I go, I can just imagine your parents being like, no. "What is she doing?" Yeah, they were like immediately like, "Like come back," and I was like, "No," I was like, "Um, <laughs> the Lord I has the called Lord. me," yeah. <laughs> uh, which is hard for them to like know what that means. But yeah. I, I'm blessed with parents that are very open and mm, they're beautiful. We yeah. love them. So yeah, well, so yeah, um, yeah. So when I moved down, obviously we went to COVID lockdowns and that was really hard. And yeah, I think just through like for literally the whole of 2020, I literally just had to do this verse, which is like be you know 
hopeful, like rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble and keep on praying. And that was just my life pretty much because I couldn't get a job. I couldn't get any like payments or anything because I'm not a citizen of Australia. <laughs> You're about to be. I, I'm about to be though. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> um, and so like I was just basically using my savings till it went dry. And then after that, I was in big trouble basically because I literally have $5 to my name and I was just praying and being like, Lord, please help me. And I remember times where people just randomly from our Sunshine Coast church would like send me money or they would buy like weeks worth of weeks and weeks worth of subscriptions to HelloFresh so I didn't have to buy groceries or it was just a crazy time where God like showed up so hardcore and like like I've never seen and it was just it was just so cool because even though it was really really tough God was showing up so physically and providing for me so like apparently like, like right there like it was undeniable that God had done things and had provided for me and helped me and yeah it was a really tough time because you know I was obviously very sad and I was missing home but then I was also like almost grieving what I thought life was going to be like when I moved to Melbourne and that was really hard and yeah I remember being upset at God and just yeah being sad and but then I also there were also it was really up and down there were also really great times of you know praying and just seeking God and being like I know this is what you have for me and just I think just having that undeniable like faith that this is where God has called me and if I die in this room, that's a, that's that's. For- and by room, she's referring to the fact that because oh, she yes. couldn't get a house. Yes, yeah, so I couldn't get a house because when we first moved down, I moved in with we all, me and Toby and another guy called Jai moved in with our pastors, and I stayed with our pastors because like I'm a girl and you know it's a big scary it's world. It's a big scary world out there, and so. I was like stuck with them, which they're amazing, but like obviously it's not ideal because, you know, it wasn't your space. Yeah, it wasn't my space, and so that was hard too. And yeah, and then yeah, basically for mo- for all of twenty twenty, I was just like, I was pretty much just praying every day and just asking God like, why and what am I gonna do? And then, and then I decided to go back to Queensland for like over Christmas time, which was when you had to quarantine because then I knew that if I had got into Queensland, I could at least earn a little bit of money and then come back again in the mm. new year. Um, but I was put into quarantine, which was hard because it was two weeks just in an apartment in the Gold Coast. And it was just crazy. Like, I've never had that kind of isolation. And, like, I am an introvert. I like being on my own (laughs) but that was like next next level level. so that was hard in itself and then also working again in Queensland and then saying to my parents I'm actually going back and they were like huh (laughs) and so then then coming back and being like okay all over again like faith that this will work this time and like just yeah just keeping praying and being patient and then yeah when I did come back I remember in quarantine I actually got a call and got a job like over the phone basically and then isn't it crazy how god works right like no, yeah. it was during quarantine yeah going back to queensland that you got a yeah job. whilst i was going back he had already provided me a future for when i was like back in melbourne and so that was really cool and then yeah all of that next year just working and praying and just yeah, my life is so, I feel very blessed now because I I have done like what this says and be, being patient mm. in the trouble and just keeping praying and keeping hope that God has, yeah, something yeah. greater. And do you think that it was the knowledge, like because you felt so called to Melbourne, mm. because you knew that God had called you to that. And I think it's easy to think, oh, well, Killy got a word from God and she moved mm. to Melbourne, that's why she could, she could keep going. Yeah. No, like if you're a parent and you 
you're called to be a parent and yes. you can be assured that you are doing the right thing in what you're doing. If mm. you feel called to a, a workplace or a business mm. and you feel a thousand percent called to keep ministering in that space, mm. do it. It's not about just, you know, planning churches and moving. No it's about going, it's getting a confident hope on the yes. inside that where you are is where God has called mm-hmm. you. And that's what I think helped. And do you think that's what helped you in oh, all of it? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Just knowing that this is where God has called me to be. Yeah. Whether that is in Melbourne or a certain workplace or yeah, a certain house, like wherever it is, just knowing that that's what God has called you to do is really like special, I think. Mm-hmm. And like such like a, almost like intimate time with God because it's like you just it's like a little secret that you have with God and you're like yeah we know like what's going on and it's like you and me we've got this you know I love that so much it's just yeah it's literally that picture of going we're in this together I trust you yeah (laughs) and it's trusting that it will be okay but you have to keep praying and you have to keep rejoicing because there's a difference between trusting and wallowing and trusting yes. and rejoicing. A hundred percent. And I think you and I have probably done both mm-hmm. at different times. For sure. And I think it is always better to rejoice. Mm-hmm. It's never worked out better to wallow in the, yeah. in the, you know, in that. It's okay for a moment and for for a season, but to always come back to rejoicing mm. and being patient and, and trusting in that confident hope that is Jesus. Mm. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Guys, Killy's story makes me want to cry every time. I'm biased though. (laughs) I do know her very well. And, And so seeing her life and her journey of pressing into God, of trusting God, even when things were difficult. And, you know, because I do know her, I know that that season, there were probably 10 more things that happened in that time frame that made that season even more difficult. And I think, I hope you are reminded that you can press on, that you can keep praying. And if you can get anything out of today's episode, I want you to know that you can have confident hope. Our confident hope is Jesus. And we can rejoice in the fact as we keep being patient, as we keep pressing on and praying that he will figure it out, even if it's not how we might have thought it would be. I cannot wait to dive even deeper into the word of God with you tomorrow. But until then, I pray you're able to find moments of joy.